Sathopoulos and Josh Vegan come together in an incredible podcast, Grow, Scale, Master, an energetic approach to drive progress, master skills, build strengths, and put the strategy back into rapid business and personal success. Backed by real-world experience in rapid scale, to playing the long-term game of business, it's the story of all the lessons learned on the journey to mastery. Be inspired, renew your energy, and chase the future with Grow, Scale, Master. The health advantage is a major part of what a great real estate agent actually does, what a great practitioner really looks at. Con, this is a pretty interesting space because I think that like, you know, if you've been watching anything that's happening in the social environment, there's more people talking about ice baths and saunas and what supplements they go to take. Um, and this is kind of a crazy era. What we're going to start to think about is that like literally humans are now in a position that we are always on. And one of the great capabilities is to learn how to actually turn off. And I heard a good quote the other day that the greats are always on. But now they've got to learn how to turn off. And so today we're going to have a great conversation on the health advantage. Con, why is health wealth? Oh, well, you know, you've heard that saying that um, the people that have all the money in the world, when they lose their their health, they'd rather give all their money away to get that health back. There's actually, you just said something there that was really interesting. Tim Glover, the book winning. Yeah, yeah. um, He speaks about how professional uh, athletes get an off season, Mm -hmm. whereas people in business never get an off season. Yeah. And I think it's become more prevalent and more socially aware with the ice baths, zero alcohol and whatnot, is because people are looking for a performance edge. Yeah, yeah. So they're actually looking for that 1% that's going to help them get better. Now, if that means discomfort in the morning, saunas to be able to, you know, uh, basically rejuvenate their their bodies and to be able to get prepared into that peak mode, I don't think it's a bad thing. Mm. But I think what we need to be able to do is find the routine that helps you. And one of the things that I've learned with myself is the extreme routines, get up at 440, do this, mm-hmm. do that. I can't really adhere to those because my, my work life doesn't cater for that. Mm. But I need one or two things that I must do every single day in the morning, move my body, stretch or whatever it might be. And in mm. the evening, it might be my come down routine, which might be a sauna or you know, or a, a, a cold shower or something like that that's going to help me get to you know bed and give me a really good night's sleep. You know, the interesting conversation is that like there's an old school saying, it's like, show me your bank statement and it will tell me where you spend your money show me a calendar and it will show me where you go to spend your time and then the next conversation is okay great and then show me your mobile phone bill and it will tell me who you can communicate and connect with yes and now I'm like hmm Maybe just show me your mobile phone and what's actually with screen time. Yeah. Because like, and this is that whole, um, there's no respite that a holiday is going to provide uh, that literally can't be created in your own own mind. Yes. And that's a great quote by Ariane Huffington because yeah. what I'm worried about is that people go on holidays, but they still stay connected into their digital life. Yeah, guilty. While, while they're there. Yeah, guilty. And so you're actually still living in the same space. You just have a different set of surrounds. Yeah, and I think maybe that's where, you know, Tim Ferriss has a lot to answer for with the four-hour week. You can basically work from ever, anywhere you want in the world. But the reality is, is I think um, when you're on a break, you should be on a break. Mm. Um, and if you're still connected, then you're, you're actually just working from home you know, or, or remotely, right? And, and for me, I'd never seen it as much before, but the first holiday after the COVID era, I went back to a, a resort and I was there and there was like a guy who was doing a deal in the pool. Yeah, and, and, and loud and obnoxious. And there was another lady there with her laptop, like literally hammering out something. And you just like, man, it wasn't like that. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe we forgot what it was like before, Josh. And mm-hmm. now that you know we're in the new norm, we have the ability to be able to work from home and work remotely. So we're always on. Mm. But at what point do you turn off? And so today we're going to go and have a look at, at that conversation around the health advantage. Let's um, look at the maybe you know four very specific areas, and one of those is what we're going to go and call mental. So that, that mental capacity. Now, I think that the best book on this was absolutely Tony Schwartz's The Powerful Engagement. And he's like, okay, great. So um, the better that you're going to get, more people are going to want to use you. How are you planning on coping with that new level of demand? And so from the mental level, he's like, well, nothing's going to free the mind more than actually just writing out a task list and or writing out a list of everything that's in your head. Right. And once you get it out of your head, then you can actually determine some level of priority of what's the one thing that if you land is critical. And so that's actually an important part that literally you've got all these things that are coming at you, all these different input devices. How do you actually then take that input and actually then determine what you're actually going to go and do next with? And then the next one in terms of that mental capability is the ability to be able to have very clear focus time. So, okay, great. In the next 45 minutes, I'm just going to go and do outgoing calls. And that's kind of like an interesting thing in terms of that mental space, because if the goal's not clear right, every distraction will look like an opportunity. 
Yeah, I totally agree. And I, I think the other thing is as well is that we're quick we're quick to rush to to get a business coach or a mm-hmm. life coach or 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 a physical coach, but who's doing the mental coaching? Mm-hmm. So you know, therapy is one of those words that people don't like talking about, and I'm mm-hmm. definitely not a therapist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but I do know that something that's going to be able to clear out or or empty out the rubbish bin is of your brain of a day mm. is going to be critically important. It could be moving your body, it could be reading, it could be meditating, it could be journaling. Mm. We have to balance the business mental side mm. with our emotional mental side, if that makes sense. Of course it does. Right. And so when you start to think about that mental capability, it's like, okay, great. Well, like, you know, I'm sure there's, there's very much a lot of mental conversations around what's going on in the industry and where you could be. But I'm like, okay, what happens if we get the other sources of energy right? Because then you start to say, okay, great. What happens if we get the physical energy right? Yeah. Now, this is probably the easiest thing to do. And it's also the quickest thing that stops when you get under load. I don't have time to go for a walk. I don't have time to lift those weights. I don't have time to go into a personal trainer. And there's an old school saying that if you don't have time for fitness, then when are you going to go and make time for sickness? Yeah, correct. And I think it's so easy to be able to fall into that trap. But, you know, energy breeds energy, right? So uh, for me, it's getting up in the morning, it's walking, walking to my gym, which is literally 10 minutes from my back door. So I've got no excuses. And even if I don't feel like turning up, I've turned up and I've done 100% of my 50% capacity for that day. Mm-hmm. That helps me. But so does a walk. You know, mm-hmm. we get to Parramatta. We're very blessed out in Paris, paradise, as mm-hmm. we call it, right? Yeah. We've got Parramatta Park there. When things are getting a little bit too much or I need to, you know, just a bit of a breather, walk across, get some fresh airs, connect with nature and be able to just move my body. And this is the important conversation is that literally from age 30 until you die, you lose half a kilo of lean body muscle that turns to fat without any active intervention. So basically you're getting fatter and fatter and fatter until you die. Stop but looking at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> so what that means is that like you've got to go spend some time yeah. in building some base muscle. You do. So if you want to be able to pull yourself out of a car at 70, yeah. but I'm tipping that what you're doing now in your 30s, 40s and 50s is going to be a massively important part of what actually happens later on. I read a book, uh, I think it was a uh, uh, tribe of mentors with Tim Ferriss, yes, right? Yeah, yeah. And I read that when I was about 37, 38 years old. I'm 45 today. And mm-hmm. there was a really good quote. I can't remember who it was, but they said, the body that you take at 40 is the body that you keep for life. Yeah, yeah, sure. And so for me, I've been trying to make sure that I can keep that body <laughs> because, you know, it's, I've only got one of these things, right? It's got to serve me for as long as it possibly can, balanced with the quality of being able to actually move my body, right? And, you know, the, the great conversations that literally, um, as soon as you get injury, that's when you realize just how amazing real health is. Yeah. And like I'm going to say, if you have any issues in terms of spinal issues or other things that go on inside of your body, maybe the pain that actually comes with that can be absolutely intense and that is debilitating. Yep. So, so most people have just got the disease of the mind. They just haven't really thought too much about what it is that they want. But in fact, their bodies are actually pretty capable if they put under a little bit of strain. Isn't it funny though, when you do actually start moving and training right, your, your whole energy shifts, but also the decisions that you make and what in terms of what you put in your mouth. Yeah, yeah, so sure. I know, I know that when I've been training every day, I've been walking every day, I've get, been getting in my steps, I ain't having a burger. Yeah, sure. I'd rather have a salad with, you know, a piece of lean, you know, protein or something like that that's going to help me st- stay full, but also mentally make me feel like I've actually done something really positive for myself today. And so when you think about the physical side, it's pretty easy, like the sleep, you know, the diet and the exercise. Yeah. So those three things come together and, and there's lots of areas where you can go experts on that. But what I would say to you is that like literally you are what you eat and, you know, Sue McCarthy would say 21 meals a week and she says 16 to your dietary plan, five, you know, pretty much whatever you want. So then you have to be awkward in social settings, but then really think about what that dietary plan looks like. So, you know, full colors on a plate, making sure that you're eating slowly, no more than you can't eat a meal in under 20 minutes. Like you've got to really yeah. chew your food and masticate as she calls it and yeah. do all of those things. Yeah. Then the water rule, like getting enough water in, making sure that you're drinking consistently, keeping that fluid coming into the body. And then if you think about like sleep, going to bed early, right? So then you can wake up early and then be in a position that you start to think, okay, great. What is going to be my form of exercise today? So Con, you've seen it in the sessions, but one of the things that I've got is just a list of things I can do. Yep. So I can go for a walk, I can go for a run, I can lift some weights, I can go to a sauna, I can be in a position, I can do any of those things, you can jump on the Peloton, like whatever it is. So given today where I'm at, who I'm with, how I'm feeling, which one of those things am I going to choose? But I've got to choose two off the list yep. and like whether or not it's some stretching, but that basics is a really important part to get right. Pretty simple. And then after you've got your, your, your physical side of stuff right, then you've got to start to think about emotional energy. And emotional energy is all about relationships because have you got someone in your life 
that you spend 15 minutes with and that you feel like they've sucked the living daylights yeah. out of you. Yeah. And yet you spent 15 minutes with someone else and they really make you come alive. So emotions are the captains of our lives. And so literally emotions precede the actions. Yet when you undertake the actions, it changes your emotions. I didn't feel like going for the run, but I went for a run. And now, and now I feel, I feel better. much better. Yeah, absolutely. And I, d- I definitely think, you know, We've spoken about mental and physical, and I definitely think emotional, you know, health uh, is really, really important. Sure. Um, I think what you feed is what you're going to return back. So if you're tolerating those relationships that are just, you know, toxic or emotionally draining, then I think it's time to make a kind of assessment on whether or not those uh, those relationships are going to be serving you for the next version of yourself. Sure. And then the next conversation is that then the music that you play yeah. changes how you feel emotionally. Absolutely. What's on your playlist at the moment? Oh, classical music, obviously. <laughs> That was a good cover. It's no, it's true. It's abs- I, I, I it's swear abs- I heard you with Taylor Swift as you turned <laughs> I up. Did not. <laughs> okay, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that whole conversation that music is one of the great renewers. And so, what, like, whenever you go to a Josh Vegan event, you will tell straight away because there's a certain playlist that's actually playing. Yes, and it's that same sort of thing, like pump up tunes to make you feel energetic for the day. And same too, like maybe some sort of music that you play. And I play a lot of classical piano as I come into the t- at night to land the plane. If that kind of makes sense. Perfect. Yeah, you know, just chill it out. Perfect. The next one after that is that then I think about, and a lot of people don't really get it, but the values-based energy. So um, when someone's doing something that is against your values, it's really draining. Mm. So as an example, let's say that loyalty was a really important thing and, and that I'd worked out that you weren't loyal, then all of a sudden that would be really draining because I'm trying to like, you know, keep this relationship going with you, but like you've fundamentally done something that's really upsetting to me. Yep. And so that's an important part is that like without clarity or definition of your own personal values, then like you don't know why certain situations actually really drain you and upset you. And you have seen this in life, like literally when there's an employee that maybe isn't performing or maybe you've got some challenges with your kids at home or maybe something's gone down with your brother or your sister or your aunt or your uncle, that every single time that literally you're at value conflict, that's going to drain a ton of energy. So Absolutely the answer is agree. literally get clear about what you believe in so then that way you can align the relationship. Yeah, totally agree with that, mate. Couldn't be more simpler than that. So if you have a look at it, it's like literally um, we're now in this whole conversation around saying that you've got to go to perform at your absolute best. Just rate yourself right now and say, okay, great, where am I at on mentally? Am I a plus dot or a minus on that? Or maybe I'm a dot right now. Okay, great. What well, one thing could I do that could change things? You know what? I could maybe go into my calendar and maybe make a little bit more of that time unscheduled. Uh, maybe, for example, on the physical side, what could I do more? You know what? Geez, I haven't really been lifting as much weight, so maybe I could get a PT. I really like that menu of options. <coughs> pick, just pick two. Just choose two. W- w- yoga, Pilates, sauna, weights, walk, run, ski, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then just pick two and just do that. That's awesome. And then your next go conversation on the physical side, maybe I get a PT for two times a week for the balance of the year. Yeah. And so that way I've got someone else who's coming to see me that's literally going to make sure that I go and push the weights even if I don't want to be there, but I'm going to feel guilty about that. Yeah. Emotional, what one or two relationships have I just got to let go? Even better, what one or two relationships can I add into my life? Yeah. So who can I go for a walk with more regularly on a Saturday morning? Right. Who can I go and have a conversation with on a Sunday? And then on the spiritual side about like actually making sure I've got meaning and purpose, how can I make sure that I'm working towards something outside of just work that literally is going to fulfill the cup? And that's about like helping, mentoring, growing up other people doing other great things. Yeah, totally agree. Experiences that rapidly shaped you. You know, um, kind of like one of the things that I really love about businesses is the people that are able to remove the awkward moments. And I was over there and I'm in the UK and I'm doing some work and all of a sudden I see this stretching lab. I'm like, okay, this is going to be pretty good. So I got to go to the stretching lab and, they, and I book in for my time. And they sent an email and we say, we really look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Like, this is going to be great. And then literally, and then in big heading in the center of the email, it says, please make sure you wear fresh socks. And I was just like, fresh socks. And I was like, that's kind of weird. Yeah. You're right. And like, why, why, why fresh socks? And I hadn't, like, of course, I'm always going to wear fresh socks. But, sure. but now they've really put it out there. <laughs> I was like, hopefully there's no double dip days, you know? So, I was like, <laughs> so I'm like, okay, great. And then I get there and we do the stretching and guess where your foot is the majority of the time? In their face. In their face. Gotcha. And that's like literally, I love it when a business thinks about the awkward moments. Before literally they gets are you, awkward. Gets you prepared mm. so then you can be great. So yeah, it was a great stretch that's and awesome. the fresh socks were even better. Oh, that's awesome. Well, one one idea, um, well, actually, actually it's an experience that's rapidly, rapidly changing me at the moment is I've just signed up to a performance doctor. Wow. Yeah, so Performance Doctor is all about prevention, longevity, and performance. Mm. So every 90 days, blood test, uh, once a year, full MRI, CAT scan, brain scan, chest scan, uh, calcium in your artery scan, DEXA scan, VO2 max scan, literally the, the bee's knees. 
um, wearing wearables that actually feed into a dashboard that uh, their data scientists and nurses actually every morning will look at my all of my health data. And then if I'm off track, I get a call from uh, Harry, the doctor, mm-hmm. Professor Harry, and he goes, hey, mate, what happened last night? Or what did you eat? Or how, how come your sleep was uh, impacted? And um, I felt that um, for me to be able to perform at the absolute peak of my abilities, I need to be able to have someone that's actually in my corner and keeping me accountable and keeping me on track and keeping me healthy. Is that why you've asked your son to wear your wearables after the AFL Grand Final next weekend? Uh, yes, that's <laughs> exactly true. Uh, yep. So that's kind of an answer. We're going to edit that bit out though. <laughs> yeah. Something that's changing your view. You know, I had this list, Con, about like influence. And I thought like if I was going to be at my best in influencing like a big deal, like something that's really important in life, I'd say that I want to do that face to face because I can read body language. I can do a ton of stuff. Sure. Outside of that, I'm then going to go to a phone call. Phone calls, I think, are really useful because there's a lot of backwards and forwards. You can have great, great conversations. You can get a lot of momentum. Outside of that, I then go to the next one, which is kind of like FaceTime or Zoom. And the ability is to then be able to read the play, but it's a really useful capability to yeah. add, add a little bit more emotion back into the conversation. Um, the next one after that is then I say voice note. Oh, yeah. Voice note's really good. It's we like, use hey, those all the time. Yeah, so I just want to let you know X, Y, Z, and that's a really good conversation. Now, with all of the new iOS updates, you can actually see the text come out and it's all transcribed. So good. So that's changed a lot. And then after that, after a voice note, then I then go to SMS and then I then go to email. Yeah. So what I'm seeing a lot, like I'm traveling and seeing a lot of price reductions um, across most of the countries that I work in. And it's an interesting thing where people go, oh, yeah, okay, great. Well, um, can you um, give Colin the buyer a quick call and just let him know there's been a price change to a million and see if you can get him up his offer? Yep. And then you go to the junior agent and they actually say, how'd you go ringing Con? You know, I emailed him. Yeah, no, that's not what we asked. And, and so this is, I'm like, and I said to people, hey, I didn't realize this was a choose your own adventure. <laughs> and, and so, but, but the basic idea is that literally do actually understand why the power of influence actually sits that way. And I'm going to be this bold that the people that will be the most successful in our industry going forward, particularly as we go through challenging market conditions, will be those that stay to the top two. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Face to face and over the phone. Totally agree with that. 